Hey, welcome aboard. I'm your host TJ. This is the SA Bowls SA Super League show. Almost forgot what we're doing there. <laughs> Joined today with Matthew from Bowls SA and Northern Knights player Kane Calls. Welcome aboard, boys. TJ. Thanks, TJ. Good to be here. Good. Well, hey, what a uh, what a week we've had. We've had round five and six out there. The double header on Sunday, leading into the tail end. Matt, it's uh, looking to be a cracker up there. The uh, probably the top six teams fighting it. We'll get to that later in the show. Yeah, it was a big day Sunday with uh, two rounds, so a lot of movement on the ladder and uh, it's really starting to take shape now with a couple of teams unable to feature anymore, but still plenty to play for this Friday night. Well, look, I think it's about doing damage at the bottom of the top sides, but hey, look, we want your interaction at home. As per normal, send some questions through that we can uh, maybe add answer and fire at Kane and put him on the spot. Um, look, as we said, we've uh, had rounds five and six. We'll probably get straight into that um, out there on Sunday at Salisbury. It was a beautiful day out there. Family day. Family fun day. It was family well day. supported. Lots of yeah. uh, kids and families with the petting zoo and face painting went down the tree. So it was a great atmosphere. I did call for the, more alpacas in bowls, but I didn't get to go <laughs> over the alpaca because uh, I was commentating game one. Um, look, <clears throat> we'll get straight into it for round five, Northern Knights versus Western Rogues. Um, as you can see on the screen, Darren Warner defeating uh, Sol, uh, 17-12. Yvonne Kelly and Kane Calls defeating Ash Close and Josh Dunham, 26-12. And Karen Lynch, Matt Short and Luke Pittersma defeating Marty Maloney, Corey Wild, Ash and Sam Dietrich, 25-17, which was actually the, uh, the game that we televised. But you know what, I might throw you straight into Kane, mate. Um, real good advantage on a power play in your uh, 26-12 win there. Well, actually, at that, at that time when we got our power play, Luke also got a power play as well. So we actually picked up, I think it was close to 14 shots yep. in one end. And also Darren Warner at that time was going to play a shot, looked at what was happening overall, decided, no, I'll just get a good second wood. And from there, we just uh, went forward, which was uh, fantastic. And yep. yeah, and what, how we're working with the Northern Knights with our team ethics are going beautifully. We're, um, we were <coughs> televising the triples game. And I was actually watching your scoreboard in the triples, and I made mention during the commentary that it was 9-8, you were 9-8 down. 8 nil down. Well, okay, yep. <laughs> we'll build up that story a bit more. And there I was, heavy wins. Um, and I sort of looked over, it was like 21-9 to nine or mm, whatever, yeah. I thought, wow, that's how quickly this game can turn with the advantage of the power play. Dead right, TJ. Yeah, the, the power plays make a big difference, and, and if you do get them right, yeah. um, they can uh, really put some damage on the scoreboard. Matt, what's your uptake there, mate? Yeah, so big wins tonight, all ranks up. Um, it was fantastic. I was floating around a, a bit of the ranks, as you said, you were down early, and I saw a shot of yours came. You had a trail on for five, and you missed it by that much, and I just thought, maybe it's not their day today. And then next time I swung around doing the loop, you were, as TJ said, about 12 in front. So I just yeah. thought I started happening for you. No, it was good. But both, <laughs> both the, um, our triples and our pairs were 8 nil down. Um, so to come back from where we were, was um, was really good. Mm. And, and of course, you know, playing against Ash Close and Josh Stone, absolutely quality players. Oh, well, not to discount so. them, mm. um, but you know, it was interesting. We'll get into a couple more of these results, and as we get through, there's been some commentary from the coaches mm. around the power play. All right, so let's get into the next one: the Southern Blazers taking on the Central Chargers, um, and the Southern Blazers uh, claiming the win, of fifty-one to forty-six. Uh, Jeff Munn defeated by Adrian Green, ten to twenty-three. Ash Wiley, who we had in last week, and Mark Evans getting up and defeating Helen uh, Minhard and Mark Haynes, 20 to 15. Dylan Lewis, Gav Pfeiffer, and Justin Parkinson defeating Fergus Roundtree, Ewan Graham, and Craig Mills, 21 9. Well, Matt, what's your uptake of this one? Um, I did see a bit of this game, so uh, a great win for Adrian Green in the singles for the Chargers. He looked to be in some of his uh, most vintage form, um, playing well in the singles there, uh, making it hard for Jeff Munn. It was a, a high quality fair, but. Um, the other two ranks, the Blazers, um, got the better running of it. The juniors in the triples, Dylan Lewis leading for the Blazers against Fergus Rantree, leading for the Chargers was a, a great affair. Um, both players showing that they're real talents for the future, um, putting on a good display. Um, good on the Blazers, getting, a, getting their first overall victory, yeah. opening their account, and uh, as we'll see later, a little bit of a costly drop for the Chargers in the end, mm. um, narrowly going down by five shots, but a, a very good game, obviously. I could be crawling through to Kane here, but he's probably concentrating on his own game at the moment. Did you <laughs> catch any of that game over next door? No, I didn't really see a lot of it because I had my hands full with um, <coughs> Closey and, uh, and Stud. So but, uh, but yeah, big result for uh, uh, the Blazers, so... Yeah. Yeah, not many people would have thought that result would have come forward with the quality in the Chargers side. So yep, quality throughout all the teams, but exactly, uh, yeah, that's right. yeah. You know, if <coughs> if you if you hear believe what you hear, the star-studded lineup. You know, 
I think they'd already etched the trophy, according to one or maybe two of the players in that team. But like in the in the uh, Chargers, the uh, Ash, Ash Wiley and Mark Evans, that's a that's a pretty good pairs combination. Yeah. So they played a great last end. I think it was nearly all square going to the last end, and Ash Wiley dobbed three on the pairs, um, made it really difficult for Hainsey to to get the shot, and that was pretty much the uh, the sealer overall. So um, very uh, very tight line between a win and a loss. Yep. All right, so moving right along, the South East and Spartans taking on the Eastern Raiders. Now, uh, we commentated that game, and it was a cracking game. 42-41 for the Raiders. Um, funny enough, Mitch Percy, last one out there, um, he's holding three. Um, it was actually <coughs> the, uh, well, in that, that one there, as I move that right around, um, Chris Thalburn... I've actually stuffed that right up there, haven't I? You're up. Yeah. Chris Solburn, yeah. Chris Solburn and, uh, and Mitch Percy against Vicky Arvin and Daryl Stop. And Daryl Stop, probably down three there, draws in shot. So he's still got one pill in his hand. So it's one of those things that, you know, you can rip that out. The shot selection, Mitch has obviously done the mature thing there and, and gone, well, you know what? I'll take the win because he had last bowl. Daryl missed. Bang. And that's it. It goes, it's right down to those crunch games, one of the games you walk away. But going through those, Tony Trelaw defeated by Tony Devlin, seven to 15. As we've just spoken about, 18 to 13 for Mitch Percy and Chris Thalburn against Vicky Arvin and Daryl Stop. And Dwayne Edwards, Michael Lodge and Chris Flavel again, defeating Daniel Greenslade, Jack Pryor and Scott Bin 17 13. I say again, because Chris Flavel was certainly on a roll. Undefeated, the undefeated mm. for the comp. Oh, well. Rolling yeah. well very well. Yes. Uh, can't get any closer than that in the in that game. One shot to the Raiders and kept their season alive with a, a crucial victory. So yep. well and, even, and even in the singles there, Tony Trelaw and uh, Tony Devlin, 22 shots in 18 ends. Yep. With Pretty, power plays. With power plays. Yeah. Fairly yeah. tight. Yeah. Yeah. So good bowls. <coughs> so to conclude round five, uh, we've got the Heisen Comets taking on the Mallee Pirates uh, with a 57-41 to 41 win. Um, <coughs> It's interesting, claiming all rinks for record 12 points to the Pirates. So Ash Hall's defeating Andrew Hill 20-19, to nice tight game. Damon Edmonds and Ben Harris defeating Matthew Freeburn and Kath Greenslade 20-12. to And then Grace Maloney, Cass Harvey and James Gregory defeating Lucy Tiller, Bailey Rafferty and Gary Meekham 17-10. to Absolutely. A good win for the Comets to get all rinks up. I just wanted to pay particular homage to the singles in this one. I did walk over at the right time again and it was 19 all last end. Ash Halls and Andrew Hill. Um, Ash Halls has been, been doing a stellar job in the singles for the Comets and, and Healy, as we know, former state player of many games, so well credentialed. Uh, 19 all. I think Healy was holding three shots. Uh, Halsey with one bullet left in the chamber and just calmly stepped up and drew shot within a couple of inches. So well done, Ash. Uh, another win for you in the singles and the Comets uh, powering along, looking looking like a good side. And Ash, and in that singles game as well, Andrew Hill got a um, got a good result on his power play early, and I think he was leading around fourteen to six. Yeah, wow. So for Ashley to actually come back over yeah. the course of that game and and also get his team back into the game overall um, was was pivotal, really. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No. So that wraps up round five. Let's shoot straight into round six and the Northern Knights taking on the Eastern Raiders and the Knights claimed a tough victory, 42-40, uh, winning on one rink to claim eight points to the Raiders' four. So uh, very tight with Bernie Ward uh, being beaten by Tony Trelaw, 10-15, to Hayley Wolfert and Todd Brand defeating Sheridan, uh, Sh Sheridan Bodner and Mitch Bursey, 29-8, and Cooper Hocking and Darren Warner and yourself, Kane. Defeated by the uh, Dwayne Edwards, Lane McGorman and Chris Flavel combination, 17 to 3rd out here. Chris, he's, mate, he's taking names. He's, he's, he's playing well and like, uh, well, yeah, the, the triples game was, uh, was pretty tight apart from, say, the last two ends uh, when, you know, when they, they got a couple of numbers in the last two ends and, and yeah, Chris, Chris played some awesome bowls throughout, throughout the course of the game but, but everyone, if, young Cooper Hocking, as the game progressed, he um, like felt more comfortable and, and was, was leading really well. So, um, no, it was, a, it was a very good game. But uh, the pairs, Hayley Wolfert, uh, she came in to replace uh, uh, Brianna Johnson uh, because Brianna wasn't available. So we had to get a, a replacement only um, in the last um, fortnight. Yep. And Hayley came in for her first game and, uh, and bowled exceptionally. So yeah, her and Todd uh, stepped up to the plate and, uh, and carried us over the line, which was uh, pretty handy. Perfect. Great team win for you, Kane. You blooded a few new players from the morning game, so you rotated your squad fairly heavily and to go 2-0 on the Sunday. 
despite only being one ranked that game, you'd still take that as a, a great day for the Knights, and but, the yes. ladder will show that accordingly later on. Yes, no, very good, very good day for the Knights, and uh, and yeah, and also the pleasing. I think we had probably about eight or nine uh, players there from the squad that played on the day, uh, so yeah, it was uh, it was very good, and uh, yeah, everyone's pretty happy. Excellent. Awesome, mate. Well, let's move right along. But the Southern Blazers taking on the Western Rogues. Western Rogues bounced back with an overall win, the sixty-six to forty-three. Um, well, it's awesome. So that puts them on two wins uh, for the season. Um, probably need to win all three on the weekend. Yep. Um, or sorry, both of theirs and round seven. But one out of two, I guess, is a consolation. Uh, Josh Studham defeated by Gavin Pfeiffer, fourteen to twenty. Brady Slater and Ash Close defeating Stephanie Clark and Mark Evans, twenty-six to nine. Di Merch, Marty Maloney, and Sam Dietrich um, defeating Therese Remington, Ash Wiley, and Justin Parkinson, twenty-six to fourteen. Bit of a trend happening. You can have a look across. I think triples, and I'll throw this to both is here. Triples are sometimes common on the game that can get away from you, but it seems in this in the in the Super League, the pairs are where the bigger scores are actually being produced. And have probably been the difference across some of the overall scores. How, how have you guys seen that? I think, yeah, uh, the, the bigger results have come from the pairs. Absolutely, you're right, well picked up. Um, I don't know the explanation for it, but uh, it's uh, just one of those things. I guess two players gelling well together, getting on a roll, makes it hard for the opposition. But definitely, like, singles, there hasn't been really any blowouts in the singles. Yeah. Whereas the pairs and also some triples, like yeah. our, our side had a bit of a, uh, a hiccup in, a, in the triples a couple of weeks back. But, but yeah, with the uh, with the th- three bowl three bowl in the pairs, uh, when 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 a team starts playing their their length, pretty hard to stop. Mm. <clears throat> so overall for the game, um, Matt, we'll throw to you the Blazers uh, Rogues. How did you see that one? Yep. So as you said, a little bit of a consolation win to the Rogues. Um, they'll be a tad disappointed with their season. Um, the results would later show they're unable to make the finals, uh, dropping that first game of the day to the Knights, but. I guess in this game they showed what they are capable of. Um, you know, they turned it around and the Blazers coming off a good win in the morning were, were really no match for them as they sort of powered through. Um, from all reports, the pairs formation, as the scoreline school, school suggests, uh, Brady Slater and Ash Close were exceptional. So um, they'll be a little bit disappointed, but um, beware, beware of the Rogues this week as um, they've got nothing to lose and um, they'll come out firing, I'm sure. And you must have fired Ash up in the morning, mate. He bowled brilliantly in the afternoon. Yes. Yeah, yeah. he was he was on fire. So, <laughs> <laughs> but he in saying that he bowled really well in the morning. A so, week's a long time in footy. An hour's a long time in bowls, bowls apparently. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, we'll move on to the highest and Comets Central Chargers. Um, Comets launched themselves into the top of the ladder with a sixty-two to fifty-two victory. Uh, Ash Hall's uh, defeated by Adrian Green, fourteen to twenty-three. Obviously, Greeny following on from the morning game with uh, great form. Ian Miller and Darren Niblett defeating Helen Millard and Craig uh, Mark Haynes, 19 to 17. And Damon Edmonds, Ben Harris, James Gregory uh, defeating Fergus Roundtree, Ben Bowman and Craig Mills, 29 to 12. Um, I'm going to start off on this one. I, I had the pleasure of being able to watch this one from home. Fair enough, because uh, you gave me the afternoon off. <laughs> You're welcome. Well done, boss. <laughs> um, sat at home, look, it, it really wasn't, I hate to say this, because I know I've really ragged him uh, here, and that, but Ben Harris, absolutely best on ground. Oh, big, now, boy, big boy McAvoy. Now, now yeah. one thing that He's maybe the, the audience may or might know, that uh, there's one Kane Cools actually has to sit in the cab of a truck with this guy. That has to be unbearable, doesn't it? Well, you know, he's been pumping the highest and comments up for weeks, and uh, <laughs> and now they're top of the ladder, so uh, he's... And, and he's up and about himself, but their whole side's playing a lot of good bowls, and... Yep. And they, they go out they go out to Salisbury every Thursday night since pre season started as a team and yeah. and you can see that in their in their side. So yeah. but that, that triples game, like the score of twenty nine twelve, it was a it was a pretty pretty high high quality game. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there was one one end where James Gregory's moved to Jack a fraction for five in the power play. Well, which was team. ten. And yeah. it, well, I think it was eleven nine at the time and then it's twenty one nine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so then you're chasing your tail a little bit after that. So yeah. No, I completely agree. It was a great game and it was interesting to watch a little bit of the antics. Ben Harris on one side, Craig Mills on the other. Good mates, right. obviously. But um, Craig Mills played the sort of the fired up draw card early and uh, Benny just sort of played it cool, played it cool and got the last laugh in the end. So um, well done to the Comets and um, yeah. unfortunately for the Chargers on the wrong end of that one. Yeah, I think Benny was sleeping outside that night. <laughs> yeah, so so ben, ben Harris went from, uh, from couch to lawn in one easy game. That's right. <laughs> 
Um, so the uh, round six concluding out there with the South East and Spartans taking on the Mallee Pirates. Um, the Spartans, 58 to 39 victory, 12 points over the Pirates, which is uh, actually quite interesting. But Blake Phoebe defeating Gary Thompson, 18 to 17, another close game. Nathan Black and Tyson Wilson, no, I can't say much more about those two lads. No. They've been bowling sensational. Defeating Dave Carter and Josh Thompson, 20 to 9. Alex Reynolds, Jody Cotts, and Ken Holtham defeat Bailey Rafferty, Matt Freeburn, and Kath uh, Greenslade, 20 to 13. Um, I have to say it, I'm going to point it out that pairs again score 20 to 9. They're performing really well, aren't they, as a, as a combination? And also, two, two of the young bowlers in our state, um, they've both got immense talent and, and they're putting it on, on show week in, week out yep. during the Super League. Yep. Um, whoever's, whoever's coming up against them, like, people are hunting them, but mm-hmm. it's not bothering them and they're just playing their game and yeah, they're, they, they're going from strength to strength. Agree, 100%. They've been one of the finds of the tournament and uh, young uh, Deanna would be very chuffed with finding them as a combination. Um, tough day for the Pirates. Didn't pick up a single point across the two games, so mm-hmm. they didn't get blown out of the water in either game, but um, that's the, I guess, competitiveness of the Super League. Yep. Slightly off your game and zero points for the day and um, made it really tough for them, but well done to the Spartans. I think they played all 12 players on Sunday and um, still managed a good win there, so well, well done. It's interesting that's very good leading because uh, Deanna Amos, the coach of the Spartans, came up to me and said, look, my comment in the last show in relation to, well, oh, the boys done some of being rested, uh, completely untrue. She just rotates the players through. Um, as I said to her, I've got to try and work out why they're not playing and give some sort of commentary to it. <laughs> um, you wouldn't drop them in a pink fit. But Deanna Amos, and I think that the compliment towards the Spartans is the fact that she's gone out with a very focused a- approach to making sure each player gets the share of the, the yeah, games. The games yeah. um, very much focused on the youth. And you know what? It's paid off for it. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm hoping Deanna's sort of coming into finals. She she might want to rest um, Nathan Black and Tyson Wilson from the pairs. <laughs> yep. You know, they've got about that, as that, much that chance. That could be an option if Deanna, if you're, if you're watching, you know, it's possible. So it, is, it is a possibility, Deanna. Of course, we know that's probably never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> right here. So that's a wrap for round six. Um, look, so what does it look like? We bring that uh, that up on the screen for the official ladder, and we've got the, uh, the Comets sitting there on uh, 51 points. Uh, shots difference, uh, 25, which uh, will probably pay a little bit of a dividend uh, to sit in the top two. Spartans, Knights and Raiders. Look, probably in contention for this week, depending on how that game goes. Maybe the Pirates, based on the Raiders game, but you pretty well lock in Comets, Spartans and Knights in the top three, I'd suggest, Matt. 100%, yep. Uh, it'll take a disaster for the Knights to miss. They really need one point to guarantee it, so um, yep. I'll give them the, yep. the benefit of the doubt that they'll claim but at least one point, the Knights. So put those, the on. <laughs> those <laughs> three are looking very good, and it looks like the Raiders and the Pirates will battle it out for fourth with the Chargers a slight like a Crows style of making the finals possibility of still sneaking in there as well, but um, they'll need a few results well, to go their way. You'd want you'd want <laughs> you want Raiders to go zip twelve down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, look, there are mathematically possibilities <laughs> there, but I can tell you now, from the Blazers, the Rogues, and the Chargers, Pride's on the line, and they look and do some damage. No one will want to claim that wooden spoon first. A normal always say Super League wooden spoon as well, so they will still be trying their hardest. I'm yep, sure. And there's only six points between the uh, bottom three, so I'm sure you're dead right, yeah. uh, Matthew. They're going to be out there. All right, so uh, I'll, Matt, I'll take it out, uh, TJ. So moving on to our next segment, allow me to introduce your favourite segment, all of our favourite segments here, I think, on the Super League show. So we've got. Kane Coles here, I'm going to ask you a few more in-depth questions about your bowls career now and the Super League, Kane. So, um, we've usually got the viewer question, but I've actually left my device out there. So, no viewer questions today, I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that's just that's between that's right. We don't have any notes getting passed <laughs> under the table today. No, not that, today. That's, that's a relief, because I, I was expecting a few of them to come in. I'm, I'm sure that uh, we'll get it to, uh, somehow through Carry Pigeon. So, uh, TJ, Kane, take away TJ's torch. Let's learn a bit more about Kane. All right, Kane. Kane Home Club Westlake Spawning Club. Yes. Um, short short time there, and now president. Oh well, I played at uh, played at Westlake probably about six years after I left Grange, um, yep. but then came to yep. Holfast Bay for five years, and yep. then gone back to uh, Westlake. And uh, yeah, my uh, in my second, well, third year of uh, back at Westlake, so I decided to become president. Well done. Part of my thing, just quickly, preamble is those people that take from the and put back in as well and dedicate. So, what to run through some of this, mate? You've been involved in coaching state squads before, 
So what element does the Super League bring to the development of players around the state that you can see that link in together? Um, the big thing is that uh, the juniors can actually play alongside and with uh, the senior state players that are in senior squads, which over the course of um, the years that I've been involved in um, state squads, it doesn't really happen. They're, they've always been separate. Yep. Uh, and especially the way the juniors are coming along these days in leaps and bounds, uh, it's, it's great. And it just shows them that they can match it with, say, the Wayne Rudigers or... Yep. Um, Kane Coulters. The Steve Dennis's. <laughs> 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 so... <clears throat> We're going into round seven. You've had, obviously, plenty of opportunity to see the bowls. How does where you bowl at state level, how does that compare to the Super League? Um, the, the concept of the Super League is great because it's it's fresh, it's brand new, uh, and 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 every every end it's always changing. Um, so um, it's a little bit different to, to playing like state bowls because it's a different format. Uh, however, um, like many, many years ago, there was like a Moama Fiver side uh, which used to be played with um, with every state playing it, which had like singles, pairs, and and, and triples in it as well. Which uh, which for some reason fell by the wayside. Uh, so hopefully something like the Super League can take off around the country, uh, and and whether it be whether it be sort of the the side that wins and then each state plays against each other, or or whether the state selectors and bowls SA put together a, a squad to go and play in those. Um, I I think it can only improve the, the standard of our game in South Australia around the country. Yep. That's it. So. Look, for those, uh, for those half a dozen watchers, I'm joking the half a dozen viewers, there's many viewers, but people that do, uh, do listen to the commentary out there on the Super League nights, I've mentioned on more than one occasion that you know, when I think about the best motivator in the game that I've seen or played against, your name's at the top of my list. Um, so what keeps you motivated and driven? You've won plenty of state titles. Is there anything still on your bucket list to tick off in the game? Uh, 